Hi, it's Saturday, uh, June 11th, 2016. Um, an Echo 64 here, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Uh, I just want to uh, do a follow-up this morning on the short video I made yesterday about the British pound or cable dumping yesterday in the evening from uh, around 143.50 to 141.79. And uh, just want to make sure uh, that I'm not trying to alarm people, people in the UK uh, especially, about a collapsing pound. Uh, I'd like to talk about something that's called uh, a discounting mechanism. And that's what uh, financial markets are. A lot of times uh, markets discount way ahead of time events or results, uh, be it uh, you know currencies, uh, stocks. If you look at uh, the 2008 crisis, the real big crash started uh, in October uh, 2008 and bottomed in 2009, but the market really topped in 2007 so it took uh, over a year uh, and the market was already telling us in 2007 that something was coming so that's a discounting mechanism and with the British pound I I've noticed the same thing since 2014 uh, the pound made a high of around 171 against the dollar I'm not sure exactly when that was around the middle of the year uh, or maybe a little later in 2014. And since then, we've dropped uh, to a low, I think uh, around 138 a few months ago. So we dropped about 16% to where we're now uh, at uh, 142 roughly from, uh, you know, in about two years or a year and a half. Uh, maybe the market was already discounting since then a Brexit or you know, the market is already discounting the fact that the uh, UK government, uh, the Bank of England, the Treasury are going to have to inflate our uh, debt, debt away. You know, this country has a lot of debt and the only one of the ways to uh, pay off that debt is to inflate your currency. So, yeah, Brexit is putting pressure on the pound. The other thing that I noticed and I think that might have even more to do with uh, why the pound is weaker, is uh, the SDR and uh, the fact that uh, the IMF has included, uh, announced that it's going to include the uh, renminbi, Chinese renminbi, into the SDR as of, of October 1st, 2016. But that was announced late last year. And uh, the currency that lost the most uh, in terms of... Uh, weighting in the SDR was the British pound. I think we the pound lost over 11%. The dollar wasn't even, you know, touched. So that's a bit like, a, you know, when you have a S&P index or the FTSE index and they take a company out and put another one in, that company that's taken out, that's going to get hurt because the fund managers will not have to uh, own that company anymore if they want to have exposure to the FTSE. So it's the same thing. Sovereign countries, when they uh, have SDRs with the IMF, they will not have to buy as much British pounds anymore from you know October uh, this year. So that's another big reason why I think the pound has dropped. It's not being talked about because it wouldn't look good, you know, uh, to come out and say the IMF is, you know, downgraded, basically, the, the British pound. So Brexit is, you know, kind of a scapegoat for that, even though it has affected the pound. So in terms of numbers and percentages from uh, 2014, from the high of 171 uh, against the dollar, the pound has dropped about 16.5% to where we're now at 142. So that's a big move. It was gradual, I have to admit, fairly gradual, uh, two years. But if you uh, look at it now at 142, if the UK electors vote to exit uh, the European Union, let's say we might drop to uh, 120, which sounds really, you know, we haven't seen those levels 
since the uh, early 80s, I think. So if we drop to 120, that sounds really alarmist, but it's another 16% drop, uh, you know, from, from 142, which is what we've had anyway uh, in the last two years. I've had questions, you know, well, should I sell my pounds, you know, and, and buy dollars or euros? Um, you know, I think if you do have pounds and you live in the UK, you need them <laughs> because that's the money that you have to spend here. What I would say, you know, and hopefully you've been doing it for the last few years is uh, acquiring physical gold and silver. And for UK investors, I would say the gold sovereign is the best uh, way to invest in gold. Silver, um, one ounce Britannia's or the old uh, pre-1919 uh, coins, because they're like uh, sterling silver. Uh, pre uh, World War One, uh, end of World War One, they're nine two five silver. You can find those, and there's no VAT when you buy those coins, but you have to buy in bulk. Um, and that's that's my view. Uh, I don't think uh, you know the pound. Yeah, we could drop further if there is a Brexit, but in the long run, if we do exit the European Union, I would say. It's a positive for the UK economy. If anything, it's probably a buying opportunity. And uh, if we don't exit the European Union, the pound will rally, but it, in my opinion, it will be a selling opportunity. So that's how I, I look at it. I'm not trying to alarm people. The, the reason for that short video yesterday was just to uh, point out that this poll came out and that it the pound dropped. You know, intraday was a big drop in the scheme of things, long-term scheme of things. It wasn't really a big move, but intraday it was. So if you uh, enjoyed my video, please like, subscribe, and share it. Uh, good luck. Take care and have a good weekend. Bye.